Greeting each other during the Eid al-Adha, we should never give up from the rules of hygiene. We know that those rules of hygiene might be troubling, but for our own health and the health of our beloved ones, we should obey to them. The most part of the outbreak is already overcome. As we are getting rid of the outbreak, hopefully we will yield the results of our sacrifices. In order to prevent the loss of employment of our nation during these times, we have put 26 billion Turkish liras at the disposal of our nation in cash. Hopefully, from now on, we will be standing by each one of our 83 million citizens. But at the same time, in the Mut district of province of Mersin, unfortunate accident which carried our soldiers have led to wounded soldiers and some of our soldiers have lost their lives. After hearing about this unfortunate event, the Minister of Defense and our Chief Commander have already gone to the province and received the news. I pray for God that these soldiers will be accepted as martyrs on the higher level, and I also wish speedy recovery to the wounded soldiers. I pray for God giving mercy upon our martyrs. Once again, I wish speedy recovery to the wounded soldiers. My August nation, last Tuesday, we had a chance to share two-year evaluation of our presidential system. As we make our analysis, we once again see that although many obstacles and barriers have been put in front of Turkey, Turkey is in the face of uh, a leapfrog development. Thanks to the help of our God and the endeavors of our nation, we overcome every obstacles and barriers and we are getting one step closer to our targets. As I always mentioned, our biggest strength is our brotherhood and our unity. With the games of the pro tutelage front, with coup plots, with political and economic traps, people try to uh, get us and kneel down and we overcome all those obstacles thanks to our unity, solidarity and brotherhood. The ones who observe this reality with all their capacity attacked the sovereignty rights and the territorial integrity of our country. They still think that Turkey is the weak country of the past. That's why they dream of dominating our country. However, Turkey as a country who has the will of exercising its sovereign rights by developing in each field is the new reality. Turkey is aware of its potential and its strength. Once again, I would like to reiterate that we are not attacking or assaulting to the richness, welfare, lands of anyone. Our only will and endeavor is to protect our interests and our legal rights. On that regard, we will give our answers to the ones in the international law with our legitimate power, and we will never hesitate to do so. And the ones who are trying to cite Turkey with force a comply, they will know that their assaults will not be left unanswered in order to defend our current rights and in order to reach to our targets in the future, we will do whatever it is necessary.
We are aware of the fact that the struggles between the countries these days are changing. Political, economic, social and military are the fields in which competitions are taking place and on that regard we are renewing ourselves and adapting to the new realities. And we are fighting both on fields and also in the discussion tables. Up until now, all the gains that we reached uh, so far was strengthened with the national solidarity. Hopefully, from now on, with the same mentality and with the same level of endeavors and efforts, we will continue to our path. My August nation, in align with the will of Mehmet, the conqueror, the opening of Hagia Sophia for worship is one of the latest examples of exercising our sovereign rights. Even the presence of Hagia Sophia shows us have we survived in those lands for 1,000 years. The most important memory of the conquest Hagia Sophia was converted to museum under such conditions. I believe we shouldn't discuss those issues anymore. It is not meaningful. What matters is that we once again enabled Hagia Sophia to serve for its original purpose. Hagia Sophia, which was converted to be a mosque in 1453, which is also the people of the eye of Istanbul, I pray for God to be beneficial for all Muslims to all our nation, and Hagia Sophia will continue to serve as a place for worshipping to all Muslims. Beyond Muslims, the Christians, of course, will have a chance to come here and visit Hagia Sophia. After a judicial decision with the decree issued by our presidency, uh, Hagia Sophia was converted and reopened as mosque again on 24th of July with the Friday prayer. The domes of the Hagia Sophia was resounded and reverbed with the sounds of Ethan. On a Friday day, Hagia Sophia was converted to its original shape, which was dreamed by three generations. And we believe wholeheartedly that the whole citizens of Istanbul is uh, actually uh, embracing this conversion. With the will and hope of being appreciated by uh, our uh, Prophet, and we would like to remember all the wise men, including but not limited, Hazrat Eyyub. We once again remember Mehmet the Conqueror, who conquered Istanbul and gave us Hagia Sophia. For 500 years, we also remember our ancestors who reverbed the domes of Hagia Sophia with the sound of Quran and Etans. From the day that Hagia Sophia was converted to the museum, which was uh, unnatural and uh, acceptable, from that day on, we also remember our elders who fought for Hagia Sophia to be reopened as mosque. As one of your brothers who also fought for Hagia Sophia to be reopened as a mosque once again, we feel in each one of our cells the importance of this conversion. We remember our youth in front of Hagia Sophia back in the days. Each one of our 83 million citizens in Turkey and also the Turkish citizens abroad share the same feelings with us. 
567 years ago this shrine was bestowed to be a mosque and we also do believe that the use of Hagia Sophia as a mosque once again actually make peop all people happy once again without discriminating on their religions. As we opened Hagia Sophia as a mosque once again, many people came to this square and they actually yelled out to the whole world their dreams. The countries of Yavuz, Süleyman the Magnificent and Mehmet the Conqueror, they said that we should walk towards the freedom and no one can stand in front of such a nation who is yelling out for freedom. Our nation with great endeavors drove the enemies out of our, our lands and after that the domes of the shrine was sounded with the appreciation to God including but not limited to Sultan Ahmed, the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia, we once again give our words that those domes will not be out of adherence until the last man of our country dies. Once again, we give our promises. We will never allow anyone to put their dirty hands on our homeland. The sovereignty and the independence of the Republic of Turkey is mentioned in our national anthem. O oh, glorious God, the sole wish of my pain-stricken heart is that no hidden sand should ever touch the bosom of my secret shrine. These at hands and their testimonies are the foundations of my religion, and may their noble sound prevail thunderously across my eternal homeland. The adhans, which are the foundations of our religion, in order to hear them in our domes of our mosques, we will fight until the last drop of our blood. My august nation, Turkey, is fighting another war for revival and independence. No one should ever think about desecrating our land and in order to realize that we are building the strong Turkey. Although the attacks are coming from inside and outside of Turkey, we are working as one fist and one body and we are defending our country to the whole globe. As our nation embraces this understanding, we are overcoming all obstacles with the help of our God and we are getting one step closer to our targets. As we were waging our independence war, we are, of course, developing our countries in each field, from energy to industry and trade to health and social support to the employment. In each field you might think of, we are developing and improving the conditions of our country, which suits to the whole history of Republic. As we are developing our countries, we are also improving the uh, improving it morally as well. Suleymaniye, Fatih districts are sided with us, and Büyük Çamlıca district and Ataşehir district are guided by Sinan the architect, and. From the scratch, we are constructing Taksim and Levant again in Ankara. From in all of our 81 provinces, we are constructing the same masterpieces, we are constructing the same shrines and temples. As a result, we are leaving our moral marks on our country with the hospitals, bridges, 
Dams and with many other masterpieces, we are leaving our marks on those lands and we are constructing the spirit of this nation from scratch. Neither economic or political crisis or twisted mentalities of the axis of evil forces can collapse this nation. As long as the resources which is feeding the spirit of our nation is fresh, with the help of God we will overcome all those troubles and barriers. The resources which are feeding our belief and faith, their physical symbols are mosques. At Hans, which are sounded five times from our mosques, it means that our holy book, Quran, lives in our mosques. Our mosques, as long as they are full with our citizens from the, uh, from the age of 7 to 70, it means that our religion is alive and still strong in our hearts. If our mosques are taking an important place in our lives, it means that we can look to the future quite confidently. If the mosques can be easily seen in the silhouettes of our cities, it means that we are getting one, closer, one step closer to our targets. If our mosques are empty, then it means that unfortunately we are going away from our targets. That's why I would like to make a call to the young people. Please do not give up on our mosques. The more you prostrate in our mosques, you should know that together with our mosques, you will be even more stronger. If the maintenance of our mosques are not done, then unfortunately we will be going away from the spiritual life. If the mosques are silent, then unfortunately our destiny will be put into silence as well. That's why as Hagia Sophia is met with the prostrating of the Muslims, it doesn't only mean that Hagia Sophia was put to service, it means that we are witnessing the revival of one nation. In the past, we were saying that we go to the morning prayer altogether. And altogether, as the high school students, we were going to the mosque for the morning prayers. And hopefully, the same process is initiated with Hagia Sophia, which is really important. As your president, I would like to make a call to the young people. We are expecting it from you. With those steps, for the future of this nation, hopefully our nation and our country will witness those times and we will be looking with confidence to the future of an Ummah whose self-confidence is derailed so far and hopefully we will be casting a light and beam of hope in the hearts of the Muslim community. I pray for God, and I know that our God knows the will in their hearts. Whatever we is wishing for our nation, we wish the same for the whole humanity and all of our brothers. Justice, security, safety, peace and welfare which comes to fruition in the Hagia Sophia hopefully will be a reality in all around the world. From the first humankind until now the evolution of those great, land, great lands come in front of our eyes and as this is the case we couldn't wish otherwise for the whole humanity. Our God says whenever there is trouble, there is easiness. So whenever you accomplish one great thing, start working for other. 
So by obeying to the command of our God, we will work for another target after we are accomplishing one. So Hagia Sophia was met with its community, with Quran and with the prayers. So it is right time for us to work for our nation once again. I pray for God to keep us in the right path. The reopening of the Great Mosque of Hagia Sophia for service, I pray for God to be beneficial for our nation, for our citizens and for all humanity. Of course, I also would like to thank all my friends and brothers, including but not limited to Minister of Culture and Tourism and our Chief Religious Officers. And in addition to that, our Istanbul governor, police forces and their delegations. I would like to thank them for their endeavors for the last 86 years for the reopening of Hagia Sophia as a mosque because we said that Hagia Sophia will be open for 24 hours and as our governor said to us, a security officers comprised of 500 people will be in charge 24 hours. That's why I would like to thank my Minister of Interior Affairs, because together with the Hagia Sophia, we also have to take many uh, mosques under safety and security. And this is also the case for the mosques in the capital, in the Ankara as well. Of course, during that process, of course, with illuminations and renovations inside and outside of the Hagia Sophia, hopefully, thanks to those embellishments, Hagia Sophia will be ready with its new form to all Muslims and the whole Christian world. Hopefully we will accomplish that as well. Once again, I would like to remember our wise men, our men of science, who longed for Hagia Sophia to be reopened as a mosque. We have such wise men, such scientists, who held conferences only with the team of Hagia Sophia, and they were saying that Hagia Sophia will be reopened. Hagia Sophia will be reopened. One day Hagia Sophia will be reopened again, and they were crying in te tears, and we were crying in tears. And thanks to God, Hagia Sophia is opened once again from Africa to Asia, from Europe to Far East. There were many brothers and sisters who felt the same level of joy as we did. My August nation, during the reopening of Hagia Sophia to worship, has brought many discussions, and those discussions are no different from the steps that Turkey is taking in the international level. Some people uh, in our country is criticizing us, even uh, in spite of bridges, tunnels, hospitals, roads, the cutting-edge technological investments. The same level of response and criticism has been brought by the same people, by the same mentality for the reopening of Hagia Sophia for worship. Their discourse is the same. The platforms from which criticism is arising is the same. Their target and aim is the same. They don't want a self-confident Turkey. They want to prevent that. You will not accomplish it. You will not prevent us. And 
We also would like to say that we already shoot the arrow and it will reach to its target. It has nothing to do with defending the differences. You didn't even plant a tree in these lands. We are constructing an undersea tunnel. They are criticizing it. We are constructing Eurasian uh, bridge. They are criticizing it. They are criticizing Osman Ghazi bridge. No matter what you do, they are still criticizing it. But let see that you construct something. But we are not like you. We appreciate the good things done for this country. Such kind of attitudes are the symbols of intolerance, dogmatism and fascism. Such kind of attitudes are the spillage out of hatred and its reflections. It has nothing to do with political opposition. In democracies, by the way, opposition parties have an important role to play. Democracy is gaining its strength if there is a strong opposition. If there is not, then it will lose power. As a politician who were on the opposition parties for many years, we know such responsibilities. Being the opposition party doesn't mean to oppose to everything without analyzing whether it's the right thing or not. If you want to become a strong opposition party, you should oppose the party in power with reason so that you can win the hearts of the people. That's why opposition parties should be competitive, should be comprehensive and should work as the political party in power. But unfortunately, we don't see such opposition parties. What we see is as follows. On one side, there is one political party who is working day and night for the development, for the welfare of its nation and the ones who are supporting them. These parties which are constituting the main access in this society is working day and night and even putting their lives into jeopardy for the development of its nation as we have seen it on the night of 15th of July to everyone, to the friends and to the enemies. On the other side, we see people who didn't work, didn't create any peace for its nation. Just like the conversion of Hagia Sophia to the mosque, the blockade of the borders of our nation by the terrorist organizations do not mean anything. For such people, our struggle for defending our rights on the eastern Mediterranean doesn't mean anything to them. They are flirting with the terrorist organizations. They are supporting the coup plotters. They are criticizing their own country to the foreigners. And they are the ones who are wasting the national resources. And what they do cannot be identified as opposition. In no place in the world there is no such definition, democracy, as this one. We should find an answer to this question by analyzing all opposing parties, from justice to security, from transportation to agriculture, from energy to sport. Do you think that so far they come up with a political party program which is comprised with concrete recommendations? They have held a Congress. They only say that we will come to power. How come you will accomplish that? What kind of projects do you have? What are you promising to do in the field of justice, in the field of health, in the field of defense, in the field of foreign policy? Do you have any concrete project? No, you don't have it. 
There is no one who says that they have concrete, solid and sound projects because they don't have such an actor, they don't have such a sound and strong team. But they do only is their slender campaigns and they try to defame our political uh, party. They are eliminating the border between defamation and criticism. We never claimed that we did the most ideal thing for our uh, country. We never said that we know everything. During my political life for 40 years, we never claimed that we know the best all the time. We always worked. We struggled for creating masterpieces for our nation. My August nation, as you all know, the one without any fault is only God. Mind and reason which is bestowed to the humanity by God is not deprived from failures and mistakes. As we try our best to give the best services for our nation, we also struggle to fill, fulfill our gaps and deficits, which is shown to us by our nation. With this sincere stance, we preserved our place at the peak of our hearts, of our people, of our nation. And with the same level of sincerity, we are standing in front of our nation as the alliance, as the people's alliance, both inside of the parliament and outside of the parliament, we continued with the same level of endeavors and struggles. Hopefully, this solidarity of the people's alliance will be appreciated by God and enable us to continue to our path. We will continue to work for new openings, for new investments, for further developments, and we are doing our best in order to make uh, tomorrow better than today. That's what I say to my colleagues. Let's realize our projects. Let's continue our path with new openings and inaugurations for ceremony. There is no place uh, for us to stop and we will continue to our path. As long as our, we are healthy, we will work day and night with our full capacity. Hopefully, uh, we will be appreciated by our nation and by our God. My August nation and dear members of the press, uh, before I conclude, my speech, let me briefly share a couple of issues that we have come to decision in our cabinet meeting. In this eight al adha for the sixth time, 1,000 Turkish liras of bonuses will be paid to the 12.4 million pensioners. And the opposition party should understand this number quite crystal clear. The total amount paid is 64 billion Turkish liras. And without waiting for the festival of sacrifice, the payments, the aids for the elderly and the disabled people will be carried out before the festival of sacrifice and the scholarship payments for our students will be paid before the start of the Eid al adha and six, uh, more than 603 million Turkish liras will be paid to 55 million Turkish citizens. When I take a look back, as you know, uh, there were some people who are right now at the opposition party who couldn't pay the salaries of their officers. Thanks to God, during our term at office, we didn't have such problems. Everything went smoothly. In order to give what is deserved by our farmers, we give the subsidies to them. 
And in addition to that, I also would like to say that we are attaching significant importance that the Soil Products Office are giving reasonable uh, warranty levels. We have already announced the prices for cereals, but today the not guarantee prices uh, have been defined and let me announce it. Last year, the Soil Products Office has defined the kilograms of not warranty at the level of 16.5 to 17 Turkish liras. Thanks to this warranty price, the not prices in the season was between 18 to 20 Turkish liras, so our farmers received what they deserved. The export price of the not increased from 5.8 dollars to 6.72 dollars. Thanks to that, our country received approximately 300 million U.S. dollars, and our total export volume for not was 2.2 billion dollars. The ones who couldn't grasp what those prices mean try to confuse the minds of our nation with disinformation. Maybe it is due to ignorance or due to bad will. I am putting such deliriousness aside because at the end of the day, our source of strength comes from our nation. That's why, by announcing the price... Well, you've been listening to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan speak after the weekly cabinet meeting. For more on this, let's cross over to our diplomatic correspondent, Andrew Hopkins, who's been listening in from Ankara. Um, Andrew, usually after these weekly uh, cabinet meetings, there's usually headlines coming out of Syria, out of Libya, uh, drilling in the Eastern Mediterranean in relations with the European Union. Uh, today, it was a different story. Uh, that's right, Ali Jan. There wasn't really any of that at all. It was all really most of this speech tied to sort of Ottoman history, uh, Turkey's religious Islamic heritage, and also overcoming challenges for Turkey over the years. And this was all really tied into that decision to reopen the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul uh, as a mosque. And that was uh, during this speech. He spent quite a considerable amount of time addressing that particular issue. He said this is one of the issues that Turkey has shown, that it's able to sort of throw off these challenges which are made to its sovereign rights. This was a decision the Turkish government has been saying all along. Uh, that it was their own decision to make. It's not for other countries to get involved. This is a building which is on Turkish soil. It's inside a Turkish city, and it's only the Turkish people and the Turkish government who can decide on this. There have been criticism from uh, some governments, such as Greece, because this building was initially a, a Greek Orthodox cathedral in the early years, and one or two other uh, religious organizations, institutions around the world. But really, the Turkish president there emphasizing the importance of this decision to reopen the building as a mosque last Friday, when the first Friday prayers took place, as a, as a very important uh, move for the country. He said, uh, again, able to come and visit. It's going to be open for 24 hours a day, but there will be security guards there looking after the building throughout all of that time as well. And he said that he believes everybody in Turkey is, uh, is embracing this decision. Uh, and this is a, going to be a very good change for Turkey uh, as it moves forward. All right, our diplomatic correspondent, Andrew Hopkins, with that update after President Erdogan's weekly cabinet meeting. Thank you for that. All right, hello and welcome to TRT World. This is the News Hour. We're live in Istanbul. I'm Alijan Ayanash. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, two South Caucasus neighbors, Azerbaijan and Armenia, have been locked in a conflict for decades. Just last week, at least 12 Azerbaijani soldiers, including a general, 